Joint variation. When we were talking about joint variation, then we have three um, variables that we're talking about. For example, if I have a rectangle, and I have the base as x and y as my uh, my height, then my uh, area of this rectangle is x y x times y. Now I'm talking about what I'm talking about here now is I have two variables in order to find the area of uh, a rectangle. Then we and they are and they are all of them is in the in in the numerator. We don't have any divisor. So this is now is called joint variation. We have two variables that we are multiply, multiply, multiplying with each other, then we have joint variation. So, generally, if we have x, y, and z, then we have z is equal to x times y times, that is times, and then the, 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 um, what's this again? constant of variation k so if we multiply two variables and multiply that also or divide that also with the constant of variation the constant of variation doesn't matter what matters is uh, the two variables that we need to multiply with each other and they are called joint variation it is almost similar to uh, direct uh, variation very similar the only thing is that we have an, uh, one more variable to take care of and combine combine variation that means I'm going to combine direct variation, inverse variation, and joint variation. So, for example, I have maybe you you recognize this formula k m sub one m sub two divided by b squared. As you can see here. And it is, this formula is uh, the force, gravitational force, between two objects. So if I'm going to write this now, is that the force of attraction, F, as you can see, between two objects is jointly proportional, jointly proportional to their masses. So M sub 1 multiplied by M sub 2 and inversely proportional to the square of the distance between them, as you can see here. It's the inversely proportional. And then we have the k there because we, we need to have the constant of variation. As you can see, I, I combined all of the three, then I co we call it combined variation, logically. I hope you understand. So joint variation is very related to direct variation but you have to deal with two or more um, variables uh, i will give more for example uh, the volume of of uh, if i will volume of this and uh, block as you can see here So yeah, if I have this is my x, y, and z, the volume of that is equal to x times y times z, x times y times uh, the height, as you can see here. So I'm dealing with, directly dealing with um, three variables, 
to find the volume. Say this joint variation. Let's uh, read some some applications. Let's decide if we we can find joint variation or uh, combined variation. Okay. Uh, the volume of a right circular cone is jointly proportional to the square of its radius. Jointly. So volume volume is equal to jointly proportional to the square of its radius r squared multiplied by and its height because it's jointly proportional and then we have of course the the uh, constant of variation let's see let's take this another one And can we find more combined variation? And here. The frequency F of a vibrating guitar string is directly proportional to the square root of the tension. So the frequency f is equal to is directly proportional to the square root of the tension t square root of t tension and inversely proportional to the length inversely proportional to the length multiplied by the constant of variation as you can see here now it is uh, combined variation so if you don't have any what happened here if you don't have any um, variable that you divide with then it is joint variation if you're dealing with two or more variables but if you're only dealing with one then it is a direct variation as you can see here uh, if you divide your your variable uh, instead by the uh, constant of variation then we have inverse variation and those are the applications joint variation is very similar to um, direct variation yeah, but now we're dealing with two or more um, variables combined variation we are combining all combine direct yeah inversely and then joint variation together then we have a combined variation so i hope you, you learned something uh, from this uh, series of videos on variation and just remember that uh, direct you need to to hear or read about in uh, directly proportional or virus directly if it's inversely proportional then you have the inverse and joint is very similar like it. the variation equation from the given information again we're given the volume varies jointly so we have v equals the variation constant k and then it varies jointly with the square of the radius and the height so we have times r squared times h. This is the joint variation equation for the volume of a cone. Our goal here is to determine the value of k, the variation constant, when the volume v is equal to 25 pi cubic meters, the radius is 5 meters, and the height is 3 meters. So we'll substitute these values into our equation and solve for k. Performing the substitution, we'd have 25 pi equals k times r squared is 5 squared times h, or h is 3. Simplifying on the right side, 5 squared is 25, 25 times 3 is 75, so the right side simplifies to 75k, so we have 25 pi equals 75k. To solve for k, we divide both sides by 75. 
On the right side, this simplifies to 1k or k. So we have k equals. Notice so how here the fraction simplifies. 25 and 75 share a common factor of 25. There are three 25s and 75, and one 25 and 25. And therefore the left side simplifies to 1 third pi. So k equals 1 third pi. If we want k equals pi divided by 3, where k is the variation constant. So this is what this question is asking for. 